am Barbara from Group 6, and I, along with my teammates, Samuel, Francisco, Brandon, Loe, Carolina, and Yuli, will be talking a little bit about Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings. Uh, we'll give a brief, brief intro and history of the company, and then we'll go right into its financials, uh, talking a little bit about its liquidity assets and its debt-to-assets ratios, and finally, we'll leave you off with our thoughts about whether it's a good investment or a bad investment and where we see the company going in the future. So let's get started. Introduction. So the company was founded originally in 1966 as Norwegian Caribbean Lines. Today, it is a global cruise company that operates three different cruise lines. These include Norwegian Cruise Line, of course, Oceana Cruises, and Norwegian Seven Seas Cruises. Amongst these three, they have a combined fleet of 24 ships that travel to 500, over 500 destinations worldwide. Also, they're planning to introduce four new ships by 2020. Um, the company went public in January 18th, 2013. Its IPO price was $19, and today it is traded at 40, uh, over $44. So we've clearly seen, seen an over 134% increase since its IPO three, over three years ago. Um, it is traded in the NASDAQ exchange. Um, the company is incorporated in Bermuda, but its corporate headquarters are in Miami. And finally, um, the company is most well known for its introduction of freestyle cruising, which revolutionized the industry by giving a lot more flexibility to the cruiser in terms of what they want to do, what kind of um, food they want to eat, when they want to eat, what kind of excursions they want to go to in their destinations, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's a little bit about the history. I'm going to send it over to my colleague Yuli in Miami, and she's going to start off on the financials for you. Thanks, Barbara. We are going to look at a general financial snapshot of New Region. If we take a look at the past four quarters and the stock performance, we can see there has been a steady decrease. And it started at $58 in January, dropping to $43.99 um, towards the end of the year. There are a couple of reasons why this is happening. Actually, in May, um, New Region released its uh, first earning report and where they cited that the, one of the major reasons why the stock was suffering, it was due to the terrorist attacks um, in Istanbul, Brussels, and Paris that has caused a major struggle in the cruise line, in the European cruise revenue. Um, in addition, towards the end of the year, that low um, continue to, that, that low um, price is due to the expected low demand um, of the cruise lines and uh, in general. On the positive side, the um, stock will start to increase due to a major addition of the new region joy. It is a ship that will cover the Chinese market, um, Asia Pacific, and it will continue to value, increase its value uh, throughout 2017. And this upcoming launch for the new region joy shows the company's success in a rapidly expanded market. Uh, in addition to its expansion, there is um, a financial strength that can be seen in different areas. To me, two that stood out uh, in researching for this presentation was their four quarter earnings. We can see that um, in the quarter two, uh, they earned 1.2 billion, an increase to 1.5 billion uh, to quarter three. And not only are they making more money, but they're also uh, keeping more of that money. So if you see in quarter two, they, their profit margin is 12.2% and then increased to 23.1%. So we are now going to look at a more detailed financial health of um, New Region Cruises. So I'll pass this on to my teammates. Thank you. Thank you, Yuli. Now we're gonna have a much, much deeper analysis of the financial situation of the company. We're gonna talk about liquidity. Liquidity ratios are the ratios that measure the ability of a company to meet its short-term obligations. The higher the liquidity ratio are, the higher is the margin that the company possesses to meet its current liability. Li liquidity ratios greater than 1 indicate that the company is in good financial health and is less likely to fall into financial difficulties. 
After reviewing and analyzing the liquidity and ratios, liquidity ratios of Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings Ltd., we can conclude that the company does not possess the capacity to meet its short-term obligation. We can see that in the value of its current ratio of 0.14. This over here, we can show that the firm has not enough resources to pay its debt over the next 12 months. Also, we can see a quick ratio over here of 0.12 also indicates that the company cannot meet its short term using near cash or quick assets. Now we're going to go to this negative value of 0.17 of the networking capital ratio. This shows that the company does not, have, does not have the capacity and funds necessary to continue growing, expanding and improving its operations. Now we're going to go and analyze the asset situation. Okay. As we all know, asset utilization ratio are the key to analyze how efficiently is the firm managing its assets in relation to producing sales. In case of this firm, we can see an inventory turnover ratio of 0.09 over here. This ratio measures the firm's management of its inventory. Usually, a higher inventory turnover ratio indicates better performance because the firm's inventory are being sold more quickly and it seems like healthier. The value of this ratio indicates if inefficiency, poor sales, excess inventory, poor liquidity and possible overstocking. Now we're gonna do, we're gonna see another value, the fixed asset turnover ratio of 0.46 over here. This indicates low efficiency, managing fixed assets to generate self-revenue. A higher value would indicate that the assets are being utilized, utilized efficiency, more efficiency, efficiently and a large amount of sales are generated using a sales amount of assets. Now we're going to pass over to Brandon, he's going to give you another view of this interesting number of this firm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Francisco. So now we're going to be moving on to debt ratios. Debt ratios show a company's overhead, a company's debt compared to its assets or maybe compared to its owner's equity. It just shows total liabilities of the company compared to perhaps just cash flow assets in general. These debt ratios, to give a quick synopsis or summary, the higher the ratio the more unfavorable it is for the company and just the more risk it shows for the company, which tends to be the case for Norwegian Cruise Lines. Our total debt ratio is 0.69 compared to industry average 0.39. This is showing way above industry average. This is showing weakness for the company. This is showing a lot of risk for the company. Um, this just does not show much upside or growth for the year. One positive thing I wish I could show you, I do not have a screen with me, is through the quarters, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, the debt ratio, total debt ratio was actually decreasing throughout. The annual ratio is 0.69, but we started off our first quarter with a debt ratio in the high 0.7s slowly moving down to the low 0.6s by the end of quarter four we kind of saw a slow downtrend in their debt ratio which does show some promising um, good cash flow behavior for the company moving on to next types of ratios is our profitability ratios these ratios are kind of work opposite than debt ratios the higher these ratios are the better it looks for the company the more favorable our main profitability ratio, um, our return on assets ratio, is net income over average total assets. This profitability ratio for Norwegian Cruise Lines is 0 0.03. 0 0.03 is actually a little bit less than industry standard or our closest competitor. It's about half. Nonetheless, it still shows promising growth for the company. Like the debt ratio that was kind of downtrending, this one through all the quarters was uptrending a little bit. So that just shows a little bit better cash flow management throughout the separate quarters. One of my favorite profitability ratios is actually the profit margin ratio, which tends to be our strongest for Norwegian Cruise Lines. Net income over total sales, 0.10 is the ratio. So that means 
about 10% of our total sales is our net income. I feel this to be somewhat strong for the company, especially compared to industry average, 0.15. Of course, yes, it still is below industry average and our closest competitors, but it still shows a lot of strength for the company to be 10% your net income of your total sales. Really, really good sign for Norwegian Cruise Lines. And like the debt ratio that was downtrending, like our return on assets that was uptrending through the four quarters, our profit margin was also uptrending through all four quarters, starting in quarter one in 0 0.06, 0 0.07, moving its way through all the quarters up to 0 0.10. Um, this just shows great promise and great growth for Norwegian Cruise Lines. And this is probably something that our SWOT analysis with Loe and Sam will be able to tell you next. Thank you so much.